Welcome to my first battle report. My name is Daniel Nelson, a Sergeant Bus on the forums. Gathered here with Omnis or Charles and uh, Jay from Chain Attack. Welcome, guys. Glad to be here. Hey, everyone. Right on. This is a video from the Air Mountain Cup, the finals, Legion versus Signar. I'll turn the time over to you guys. Starting, I guess, with first player, you can talk about your list. Okay, so I won the die roll and opted to go first. I had three lists at the Intermountain Cup. They were Siege, Nemo 2, and Haley 2. Uh, we were playing a format where you had to play each list at least once. This was round six, and I had played uh, all three lists in the first three rounds, so I was my lists were unlocked. Um, I knew that Charles was Charles was list locked into Thagrosh one, and so uh, it was. I had the option of selecting what list I thought would pair best versus his list. Um, Charles, what did I? What did you think of the the matchup? Well, uh, obviously, I was not happy about being locked in in the in the final round, but uh, this was going to be my third Signar game of the day, and sometimes tournaments just go that way. Screw. And uh, the last round was also Signar, and I had the the hard decision to either play play Vale two again and be locked in, or try to play Thags in that matchup. And for me, I was just like, you know, I need to get to that finals table because I was the only one left from my store undefeated, and uh, I just felt it was important to get that game, and uh, had to kind of grin and bear it against you. So on my list that I ended up selecting, the list was Haley 2, Thorn, Squire, Journeyman Warcaster, Anastasia Debray, Gorman DeWolf, Rupert Carvolo, Ragman, Victor Pendrake, Arcane Tempest Gun Mages and UA, Storm Blades with UA and three Storm Gunners, Forge Guard, Max, and Alexia 1. So lots of solos, lots of dudes, uh, Thorn is my only Warjack. For me, uh, I was playing a PFAGS tier list with three angels, two units of war spears with the UAs, uh, a free war chief, min pot, and two forsaken. Uh, this list was designed a little bit more towards Menoth, but uh, I didn't get any of those, and it was really, it definitely was my third list. And I just was trying to take advantage of the additional deployment and potentially the, the amount of boxes that the army would present and but uh i'm not even sure i i realized how bad of a matchup it really was and until we were part of the way into it jay's list is really strong uh it is a list that i've put uh, quite a bit of time into uh trying to get it right um i've tried a bunch of different variations on it there's still some parts of the list that i'm not necessarily happy with but i think overall it's it's a pretty strong list I would definitely agree. You did a really good job with that list, and I think it catches people off guard. It can sometimes, yeah. Uh, my particular list, I've been trying to make PFAGs work kind of all year long and have not quite found the, the right list for him, and this was another experiment. So we're, we're setting up... Uh, the scenario is process of elimination, which I feel is a very live scenario for Haley 2, uh, for any caster, but especially for a control caster like Haley 2. Agreed. Um, my, I ended up putting my storm blades on my right flank and my forge guard on my left flank, and the gun mages in the middle, and most of my solos in the middle as well. And it looks like we, we set up fairly quickly, and uh, I believe I first turn... It's, so we're recording this in uh, the end of November, and we played this in September, so... <laughs> I will say that I remember um, getting ready to roll the initiative for this game, and you waited for me to roll my die, and I rolled a one. And you were just like, I don't even have to roll, I win. <laughs> and I was like, God, that is not the way I wanted this game to start. Like, you, uh, were, you were probably getting the first, but I would have felt a whole lot less shitty if I was going first. Yeah, um, going second versus Epic Haley is one of the worst things in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to apologize for sure about the tardiness. Uh, it took me a long time to get it to a place that I could show it to you guys, and then... Uh, Jay, you were getting married. And so that's yeah, mainly my fault, so <laughs> there's no reason for you to feel bad about it. <laughs> 
Well, if I had gotten it out faster, I might have might have been able to. But well, Jay, despite we were fine waiting, congratulations on the on the marriage. Thank you. Yes, 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 indeed. How how was it? Uh, it was great. We uh, went to California, got married in Disneyland, and had a had a good wedding. Disneyland, that's cool. Yeah. So, turn one, I think that I did Dirge of Miss on the Storm Blades and also got Arcane Shield on them. Haley did uh, Deflection or Deceleration. I can never keep straight which one of those she has. You'd think I would remember this by now with how many times I've played her. Deceleration <laughs> is what it is. Deceleration. Well, there you go. So, the one of the common complaints with Storm Blades is that people think that they sort of have victim stats is a phrase they like to bandy around 12 15 neither of them are that high to where it stops them from getting killed too much um but once you buff them enough in, in this particular instance they against range attacks they get up to 15 20 which is uh versus range attacks which is much more uh formidable and as you see there, I was putting prey tokens on each of the objectives because one thing that I've been doing a lot in 2013 was when I when it's time for me to switch prey to something else, I would that's when I would kill an objective, and it would give me a little bit more control over where prey is going to end up. Uh, so that's what I went with in this particular one. Yeah, and it works works pretty well. And I'm just sitting here watching Jay, like, cram his dudes down my throat, and it's feeling better and better every minute. <laughs> I hear that often. Yes. One of the things that I think is difficult playing against uh, Haley 2 is that I've ran far enough forward that if you're going to move up and contest the zones, you're going to get hit. And if you don't move up and contest the zones, I'm going to score. And so it uh, presents sort of a, a lose-lose situation, hopefully, for the opponent. That is definitely the way that it feels. And... Haley is a lose-lose for everybody. Well, <laughs> well, I have fun playing her. <laughs> I don't want this to go into Haley bashing, because I... If this were if this were Vale two versus Haley two, I think you know we're you know very fairly matched, and it's one of those matchups that can be almost as close to fifty fifty as you get. But I was definitely uh, feeling the pressure from Jay um, and trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to go with all of this. And so I'm just eyeing everything on the board and knowing that there is uh, that there's definitely some pain coming. You know, we've got plenty of time, and yeah. I at this point I was really thinking about how, where I wanted to be when I was going to be locked in place by the Haley feet because I knew it was coming next, and so it was really about being in a position to try to minimize how much I was going to lose while having it, taking as much of the board as I can, which sounds obvious, but against Haley, you you really got to think about where your models are going to be two turns from now and in most cases you wouldn't normally have to do that but um, here I was kind of positioning the uh, the war spears so that there would be one behind them so gun mages couldn't easily push models out of the zones but there was there's still going to be a lot of gunfire coming my way um, I figured get the pot up in the middle you know, I'd like to. I would definitely like to pop out a lesser as soon as possible, because um, getting getting some tenacity spread around would be really nice for this list. Most Pthags players like to have a have a Carnivian in there, but I was thinking, uh, with in my mind when I was going to play it against Menoth and things like that, the the angels were going to be nice to threaten a battle engine, and and then also would benefit from the concealment a lot more. So there would be a better potential for me to go, here's Tenacity on an Angel, it has Concealment, maybe I even get it on a hill to try to minimize some of the shooting, and then hopefully the uh, the War Spears can absorb a lot of the POW-10 shooting that's been flowing around. But they don't necessarily love Weapon Masters. That's fair. So um, up to this point in the IMC, um, give us a small, you know, a small... Um, 
lead up up to the up to this, you know, kind of talk about your your matches a little bit in the IMC in general while we wait for the game to really get going. Well, I can go first. I uh, I got Epic Kane round one, which is the way I've, both of my IMCs have gone so far. Um, and so that was a little scary. I was like, man, I do not want to lose to, to Kane right away. Um, but I got through that match playing Veil 2. And we've got, I haven't thought about these games in a while. And then I played Kruger 2 in the second round. Um, I played Veil again uh, just because I, I was ready to, ready to keep rolling. And it was going to be a challenging enough matchup. The guy had really good lists, and he jammed me really hard. But um, I pulled out that one on assassination because he had me pressured, like at the edge of the kill box, with all sorts of stuff potentially threatening Vale. And then I got Kador round three, and so I used that as a good time to drop Saren because it was incursion, and I was really comfortable with the matchup. And that guy had even commented that he didn't feel like he'd ever played against someone who had dismantled Kador so quickly. Uh, round four, I got a, I actually got a, a friend of Jay's. I played against Scott again. Um, that was probably one of the closest games I had ever played in my history of War Machine. Ended up barely killing Gorshade with like a couple of points to spare as I was running out of time. So it was like dice drop, clock goes, we counted up, and the assassination worked. So that one, I'm not even sure I had energy left after that. And then I got one more game against a another local from Jay's store, and we ended up doing Striker 1 versus Veil 2, which which was that hard that hard pick to go, hey, do I save, so I get P-Thags out of the way now? Um, and it was a hard call to make, but I did. So, Jay, how did your games go? So my round one was Siege versus Krios 3, and I got a, a pretty quick caster kill in that game. Uh, round two was... Haley 2 versus Goris from Trollblood Scrum, and he was playing Gristle 2. And the scenario was close quarters, and I won the roll to go first, and uh, he wasn't able to stop me from winning on scenario. Round 3 was my... I thought my opponent was going to pick the Butcher 2 theme list with the uh, wave upon wave of Doom Reavers, and that was what he picked, and I ended up taking... Uh, Nemo 2 as my counter and ended up winning the game. I actually won the game on scenario on his turn. Uh, six control points to five control points. <laughs> um, the fourth round um, I played versus one of your uh, guys from your store uh, playing Irusk 1 and uh, it was sort of a, a shootout, but I think that me having Dead Eye and Deceleration ended up uh, swinging that kind of in my favor. And uh, also, Alexia 1 ended up uh, being pretty important in that matchup. Yeah, he ended up going 5-1. and one. You were his only loss. Nice. But it was good to see Kator doing well. Yeah. Uh, then round five, I got matched up versus Trevor from Chain Attack. And it was uh, Haley 2 versus Hexy 2. I won the roll to go first. Uh, I made several mistakes in the game, but still uh, managed to win on scenario. Yeah, because at this point, there was five undefeated going into that round four. And four of them were from your store. It's true, yes. So one got pared down, you guys got each other, and I got Scott. So it was as long as you could go without running into someone from your own store. Yep. Uh, small comment I wanted to make real quick on your first match with uh, Krios 3. Um, you got him on the, behind that building. He thought he was hiding, and you're like, larger base, nope, I can see you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> something to keep in mind for those that are using large bases. Yep, he had he had thought that uh, that line of sight was going to be an issue, uh, but I was able to get it. And um, I, I think the siege is a fairly good uh, matchup versus uh, versus Menoth. So if it had gone longer, it would have been an interesting game. But I, I think that I uh, it, it could have. Uh, still hopefully gone well for me. Sure. 
So in this game, we've both moved forward. Charles didn't move for- forward too far on uh, his his turn. Um, but I'm on my second turn. If I go first with Haley, I almost always use my feet on round two. And so I'm, I know that I'm going to be feeding this turn. I've moved Thorn forward because I'm going to... I've played enough Legion, played against enough Legion, that I know that uh, the spawning vessel needs to die right away. And so that's really my priority for this turn is to kill it. And if really if I don't get too much else done besides killing the spawning vessel and getting my feet popped and getting repositioned to counterattack next turn, it'll be a fairly effective turn. I think it's worth mentioning that you triple arcane bolted the pot to death. Which yes. A lot of people were like, why? Uh, when I had brought it up. And I was like, no, it was a smart move. Get that get off the, get that off the table while Haley's going to be very safe. Yeah. So it, and you, and you got it done, which we're, we're about to see right now. And I was like, Oh, that's, that was pretty sad. You know, before I even had a shredder cause or no, I had, I had one shredder in the base list, I believe. Or no, was that a forsaken? Nope. That is a shredder. Ha ha. So I still had one shredder, but no, for, no more. We're going to be popping out. Yeah. But it was mostly in there for the the tier list bonuses because you have to have the pot to get to the fourth tier bonus, which is the plus two inches of deploy, which would have been much cooler had I gone first. That's fair. <laughs> but you know, and Anastasia's pretty good. She can be. I was trying to position my angels to make it at least a little awkward for you to catch everything, but still, uh, still got them all. Yeah, it's difficult to uh, be able to prevent me from getting into a a place where she's going to catch models and, and still and be unsafe doing it. Yeah, that's for sure. And you know, you got to try to keep the models relevant, but try to make it as awkward for Haley to place as possible. Yeah. So Haley did su- she did pop her feet. She did succeed in killing the uh, spawning vessel. It took pretty much all of her focus, but I felt like it was a, a worthwhile focus investment at the time. And I believe that's the, the storm blades that are going now. Yep. Um, I'm, I believe that they're probably assaulting that is correct which that is another thing that war spears do not love is taking those decent pow shots that while they're uh you know from range and yeah and you I, black oil the couple yeah a lot i i think that i used all my focus on the arcane bolts but a lot of times it'll be they'll be dead-eyed while assaulting which makes their uh, rat five much more palatable yep but yeah you you did blow the wad on the uh, the arcane bolts so they just had to they just had to tough it out but I recall them doing a pretty good job at uh getting some early damage on those spears yeah they did okay I think that they're uh, a little bit underappreciated with with Haley too I think that they're the they are an expensive unit. I think that the package I took was 11 points, but I, I feel like they're pretty versatile for the, the point investment. Yeah, they can do a lot of work, especially if they get there. And Haley 2 is really the, the best one for getting them there. Yeah, and, and helping protect them. And... and even thinking about that list, I mean, can you really think of something that would outperform that particular unit and... Maybe the best comparison would be Nis, but I think I think the Stormblades provide a really nice, interesting threat, and the way that you play them works out really well for the list. So, well, the thing that's that's nice with them is that when they finally get to melee, the power and strength fifteen, if they're by the leader, uh, is is pretty decent on a charge, and uh, compared with the Nis, I mean they are weapon masters, but I think they're power and strength nine, and yep. so. That's a pretty big difference in uh, hitting power. That's for sure. Uh, I think that was Anastasia that I just 
ran and, and moved up behind that obstruction, was yeah. trying to get her position to hopefully be able to get an espionage off uh, next turn. Yep, and I was super excited about her being behind cover. <laughs> Yep, just watching all of the stuff come at me and knowing there's only so much I can do about it. Yep. But that that is the way of things. This was going to be the fourth time that you played Epic Haley? Or was it the third? Fourth, yeah. Yep, I, I got my other ones done uh, early in the... Uh, tournament, and one of the things that's fairly nice about Epic Haley is that a lot of times uh, the other lists will have it. list selection in a three-list format can be difficult sometimes because it's more difficult to know for sure what your opponent is going to take, and sometimes you can expect them to take a list and you take the counter for it and they and you guess wrong, and you end up with a bad matchup and one of the things that I, I like about this list is that the number of matchups where I feel like I'm not a favorite are uh, fairly low, or at least equal. Um, I think the number of casters against this list where you know they're a favorite to win, I think is is a fairly low number, and so it's it's a pretty good all comers list. Uh, absolutely, I can't disagree with you there. And the gun mages come out and start shooting too. It's true. I can't. I can't remember what gun type they were using, but yeah, you were either going for crit brutals or snipes. I think you were just trying to get damage in where you could. Yeah. I don't think you were bothering trying to push people around. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, with with arm with only arm sixteen, it's not not terrible for the gun mages, and even getting a few points in now could help you out later on. Yeah, for so, sure. Uh, I didn't d disagree with any of the decisions. Yeah, all right. Looks like it's uh, finally over to me, and I get to ask you for permission on what to do. Yeah, <laughs> little insult to injury. Yeah, it was one of those fun things, like, oh, maybe if I do it in this particular order. Um, so I think we start off with Forsaken, because you don't want me to be able to remove from the beasts. That's true, yeah. Looks like after that, I'd probably do the my right flank unit of war spears and really I'm the the big decision that I'm trying to go for here is accepting to a certain extent <coughs> you're going to beat the crap out of me this next turn and I want to have some models left to try to continue to contest the following turn because if I don't if I devote too much right now and you still clear the zone I may not have enough left to try to contest another round Right. And so that's that is the big trade off that I'm looking at and trying to manage that going what kills can I get while there's no D cell but still not give you too much to just roll over next turn. And now I think I'm activating the angel. Yeah, I think so. And the whole time I'm kind of wishing that there was some way that I, I think I could get a reliable shot on Anastasia, but uh, it's it's never looking like it's going to happen. Defense 20 is pretty pretty difficult to deal with. Uh, absolutely, and, you know, especially with, you know, you can't... It's not like being under E. Denny's feet where you could potentially aim. You've right. got to... You've just got to suck it up and uh, take your take your shots. and got... And it's uh, this was a this this game actually go made me think that if I was going to play this list again, I definitely needed at least one Ravagor. Mm. Um, Why's that? Um, just because one, um, even if I missed Anastasia with a shot, there's the potential to catch her on fire. Right, one in three. Kill. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you know, potentially shooting something next to her, like in this 
in this particular turn. Now, you'd probably have played it differently had I had a Ravagor, but I might have been able to catch her on fire by shooting at a Gun Mage, or, you know, you know, potentially dropping a Scather Template in the right spot. I think three Angels was too excessive for this list, and one, one Ravagor really could have uh, helped to make it not as terrible, but would still probably be in your favor. Usually when I'm facing against a Ravagor with Haley, one of my... The the two most common tricks that I like to employ with Epic Haley are I'll I'll have the... I'll have Thorn run pretty far forward aggressively and either telekinesis the Ravagor so that it's back's turn, so it's not going to be able to shoot next turn, or engage it at reach uh, so that its engagement won't be able to shoot as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're they're both very good plans. Um, the... if, it, if you had, like, hid behind the forest or something like that, then maybe that would have... Uh, uh, yeah. Work, well, work. I, even if you needed to do one TK, you wouldn't have been able to kill the pot the same way. So you'd right, have to yeah. have made the choice between the two. And yep. I think one Ravagor would have done a lot more than the uh, than one Angel in this particular match. But it was an experimental list. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And this is me looking down and going, oh my god, I wish I could back up Thags. Why does this have to be a kill box scenario right now? <laughs> I was just like, there is no safe place for me to go. One of the things that I did to you, it looked like you did have an angel that was within 12 inches of Haley, and so on the previous turn, I had run, I believe, Risen uh, in front of Haley to try to block line of sight so that you'd have to kill one of them before you could get shots on her. Yeah, for sure. If That is one thing, that Haley being 16 and 14, if an angel walks up and he hits that 11 and crits, it's dice minus 2 and then crit fire and that in itself can kill Haley. and my first my first major tournament ever was lock and load 2012 and i got epic Haley round one and she hid behind a storm clad and i used a ravagor to set her on fire and that changed the whole pace of the game um i didn't pull out a win in that one but it just putting that pressure on her that takes her away from playing her her game the whole time can be huge but I wasn't sure I even wanted to try to take a shot at Haley. I mean, I maybe could kill one Risen, you know, maybe like, uh, but it, it would have been pretty tough to, pretty tough to pull off. And I'm not even 100% confident that that Angel would be within 12. I think he was more like 13. Uh, um, I, I backed him up, so yeah, you you're right, he up, probably so wasn't within 12. I think 12. you were within 12 at the start of the turn, but I think it would have been, he would have probably had to have killed a Risen, and then I don't think you would have had anything else that could have gotten shots on her, hopefully, for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, and that's probably why you had me activate that Angel relatively early. Right. As uh, maybe yeah. maybe one War Spear could have gotten on a, on a Risen, but I don't think so. So. Uh, this is where I wanted to make sure the first terror checks were going to be made. Something I'd realized playing this list for a while was that even though terror checks don't come up that often, when you force multiple of them a game, got to remember to make that check um, because it eventually some will get failed. Yeah. Um, and you were just pointing out just there that no terror check until the rest of the unit's done. Right. And Which was correct. So we finish, finish positioning the spears and I was needed to make sure that the the leader was going to get up there and um but man uh, you know it's just anything to try to uh try to slow down the assault so sure. um at this point uh, I believe you pass the terror check on the gun mages and pass on Anastasia it's true uh, yeah but okay that was about the only thing that I really felt like I had up my sleeve for this turn getting down there on models it's crazy to think that really so few attacks have happened so far and we're 30 minutes down on clock time yeah the the engagement uh, not much has happened too much as far as attack rolls um on on my right flank 
you with the things you've decided to do so far. I mean, really, the only thing that's contesting the zone is the objective. And so and killing that is going to be one of my priorities for next turn and hopefully trying to, to dominate the zone. Yeah. I probably should have, thinking back on it, I probably should have put one angel in the zone to try to create more work. But, I don't know, it's, it's such a tough call when you're just going, especially as a Legion player where I'm not used to exposing models. I mean, I play Veil 2 so much, it's, oft, it's oft, often about taking as much as you can and giving as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And just, like, handing you, potentially handling you a model, um, especially if I don't get tenacity on it, um, it, it, I thought I just might want more come the following turn. Yeah, I mean, the problem for you is the, the, um, with Beast Lore, the blades are going to be most likely hitting an angel. Yep. And blades don't like getting, (laughs) uh charged by or angels don't like getting charged by storm blades their their armor so low and hit points are so low that it doesn't take too many to to take them out i probably should have accepted that i was going to lose stuff and i needed to force you to devote more attacks to that side and i'd be able to feed back the angel anyway right and it might be it might have been a better play on my part to devote more to that zone but uh i was a little intimidated in this matchup it was a very, very good list, and I, I don't think it's unbeatable, but I don't think I was playing the right list for it. So I was, I was starting to see the, I was starting to see how bad things could really be. And I'd heard, uh, I'd heard Trevor and Scott complain about your list a little bit on the podcast. So it's, it's one of those that I don't think you realize how rough it is until you play it. Yeah, that can be true. And you, I mean, you just got. JVM in Iron Gauntlet with the same list just, you know, not even a week ago. Yeah. Yep. We, that was, yeah, he, that was his, uh, he was playing Callus and Thyrush 2 and he played Callus versus me and uh, I ended up being the, the only loss that he had during the day. Yeah. Didn't he end up taking second? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He flanzered his way up. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, but um, no, it was uh, I got to I got to watch part of that game, and uh, that was oh I was like Jake I know how you feel. Um, we we have a local player named Alex who has been actually um, playing a lot of different versions of Haley too, mm-hmm. and he played some stuff very close to this, and I had played a Callus list very close to Jake's, and so I was looking at that game and going, oh I've played almost this exact matchup. It's uh. It's a scary one, to say the least. But Well, now it's back in your hands, and you're primed for destroying as much of my army as possible. Yeah, hopefully. The The goal for the turn was to have the Stormblades charge into the War Spears and charge into the objective, have Haley try to dominate and try to kill as much stuff on the left link as I can and try to get a um, espionage off this turn. And for most people, uh, by the time an espionage goes off, it's uh, starting to look really ugly for him. It's it's tough to lose a turn defeat and then have me basically take two turns on the following turn. Yep, and you only need one model in for the whole unit to be able to take more shots. <laughs> yeah, it is that silly. <laughs> So we're pretty much just watching you start preparing the stuff. Knowing you need to get that that war spear off the table, and but get him out of the way nice and easy. Telekinesis is a good spell. It is. Needs to be on Epic Saren. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Those crazy girls. And Haley does uh, move back to the corner of the zones to to try to set up the dominate. Yep, I'm like, oh man, he's going to score three points. This is not going to be pretty. Because the, the the difficult situation is that you have a very high likelihood of getting three points, and that means you only need to control one zone or the other. And so that means I'm going to have to basically split my resources between the two zones the following turn. Whatever I have left, 
And you, all you have to do is really look at and go, which of the two zones is easier to clear? Right. And that is, that can be quite a predicament because this your list clears troops like a champ. And if there's one heavy in the zone that they can't kill, you just move that guy out with telekinesis or gun mage shots. Um, so yeah. it can be it can be very hard in this type of scenario. Yeah, in Iron Gauntlet, when I played the games, um, I played like the first four times I had the first four rounds I played Epic Haley and all four I run, I ended up winning on scenario including destruction um, so it's it's definitely a uh, something that can be difficult for an opponent to prevent sometimes do you ever play her like and sit down at the table and go this is going to be a long game this is going to be an attrition slog or do you feel like it's probably going to be a scenario win or not at all um, a lot of times, I'm, m- m- a lot of, like the destruction s- scenario win was I basically tabled my opponent and then won on scenario instead of killing his caster. Yeah. But and that's, so, that's basically an attrition win. If they're, yeah. if their army's like 75% or more dead and you just win on scenario, that's an attrition win in my book. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, that was... I and almost all four of them were uh, that type of victory. Okay, mm, so, makes sense. It wasn't the the win versus Jake wasn't uh, he, he wasn't tabled by any means. Uh, he still had his two Ravagors, but um, they were weren't necessarily in a, a great position to uh, contribute to the the battle. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that one was still probably a, a scenario win. I think at IMC though you had you had more games that were kind of a more scenario and not enough of it was played out. Like you had just gone through that really difficult game with Trevor, like edging out that scenario victory. Right. And he had a fair amount of stuff left, but in yeah, he some... he was ahead on attrition to me, <laughs> and yeah. but uh, being able to. You know, cover both uh, circles, and that one was was kind of difficult. So, didn't if I recall, like he was trying to get a posse in to contest the other zone, and you bossed him with a gun mage sword attack. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was not pleased. Uh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I real, in, in retrospect, I kind of wish that I had lost that game because I've we. The IMC ended up being six games long, and about round five, I started to have uh, mental lapses, which uh, compounded in in this game. And since then, I've I've found out that um, if I uh, do some lifestyle changes, that it, it uh, the issues aren't quite as bad. Um, but when when this uh, during this IMC, I, I was a little bit unaware of it, and so there were some uh, medical issues going on that I didn't know about that were, were causing me to uh, uh, not think as as well as sharply as a lot of times I, I try to. But well, you were you were definitely a very solid player, and it's mental issues aside and physical issues aside. I mean, six rounds can be draining on anybody, even yeah, top physical health, and yeah. and it's. The, if you've ever talked to somebody, and for any player out there who's ever had someone like call them while they're playing a game, and just like, are you, or like a, a significant other especially, and they're just like, are you ignoring me? And it's like, I, I really can't focus on two things right now. There are so many things going <laughs> on in this game. I can't even have a basic conversation with you and maintain the focus that I need for this. There is just hundreds of little factors that you're trying to keep all in your head, and. That's part of the reason why you don't have random people just pipe up and talk during a game because it's easy for one person to focus on one thing that they're watching and going, oh, are they going to make a mistake with that? Whereas with two players that are trying to remember everything on the whole board, um, little stuff gets forgotten, and that's that's just the nature of the game. It's true. Yep. Um, so gun have... mages have, uh, have 
moved around some war spears, setting up things pretty good on that side, and, uh, and then you got the, the forge guard coming at me. Yep. Not my favorite thing to see is war spears. Uh, but as I recall, they, they end up uh, surviving the, the charges fairly well. Seems like the the set defense ended up. Uh, oh yeah, the set defense really ended up coming up as an advantage because you were needing straight sevens. I think there was a there was a couple misses. Um, if I recall, I think you bossed one, and then I think the other one lived. But we're we're about to find out. But you you've got Anastasia coming, so I think in your mind you're all ready to just reactivate that whole unit anyway. Right. Yeah. So that's one one thing with this video is where the the death clock is being positioned covers up your dice a lot of the time. Yeah. I'm realizing I've barely rolled dice yet this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my first game in the Iron Gauntlet, my opponent complained complained to uh, Will Hungerford about that actually about death clock and etc. Because he just in general he preferred. He's a player who prefers time turns, and we were playing uh, Butcher 1 versus Haley 2, and I used about 50 minutes of my clock, and he used 16, and did almost no attacks, and I pre about the only model he had left was the Butcher, and so uh, it, was, it can be kind of a, a negative play experience sometimes when it's that extreme. Well, and when I was talking about my local player, um, he's gotten quite good with Haley too, but he's still taking a lot of time with it. And right. whereas when we played the Callus on Haley match, it actually ended up working out reasonably well for me because he was struggling with a lot of the sevens and he was having a trouble getting through four units of infantry and two heavies. And but when we were looking at the times, like even though with some dice, some sevens going my way, and it was looking like it was my advantage we looked at the clock and he had like five minutes left and I had over 30. Right. And that's not an uncommon situation against Haley, especially with the more infantry oriented Haley lists. So this was the, the one of the first mistakes that I made. Um, when I had been planning out my turn, I had been planning on having over on the, my far right, the model that hasn't moved is Ragman. I was planning on activating him before the storm blades, moving him over, and uh, getting Dark Trout on the attacks on the objective. I thought you uh, were also considering that one of those three um, storm blades that went after that war spear. I thought he was going to be on an objective. Yeah, I meant to have more charge the objective. I did run one over in between the zones to uh, get within. Uh, Espionage range so that the whole unit would hopefully be able to activate again. Yeah. And if I recall right, you basically left that objective with like one health. Yeah. It was not much at all if you had gotten one more guy on there. So, yeah. but at the same time, you're like, espionage is coming, they'll reactivate, they'll finish that objective. Right. So I needed to do have Ragman get Dark Shroud out or send one more to the objective. And so I was like, whew, well, you know, before fully realizing that the Stormblades were going to activate as part of that espionage, I was like, hey, my one break. Yep. So on, out of your guys, uh, can you describe to the listeners which, which model is uh, Thagrosh? Um, so Thagrosh is... Um, he's basically right above the angel on the screen. There's the War Spear Chieftain for the that's the UA, and then Thagrosh is just um, just above him. And it's kind of hard to see at this angle, but he's the one with the big cloak coming off the back end. Was that what the description you were looking for? Yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of Ogren on this table. And so is she. Is, is he the one that is... So this is where you walked up Anastasia, yeah, right and you're in between the two War Spears, and so you pass the terror check for um, the War Spears, and I realize you're in melee range of Thagrosh, and so it's like you have another terror check for him. And 
I didn't realize why you had moved there, her there until after you told me, but looked like you were looking at the War Spear Solo, right. who was um, who was behind Thags, and you thought you needed to get within five inches of that model. Right. Um, but that guy would have been, I would have been killboxing myself if I were that far back. Yeah. Um, there was a point where um, somebody came up and asked me about this game, and I was like, this is the first time that I've had a tactical benefit because of how I base my models. <laughs> As, uh, the War Spear you, solo looks really cool on the the upcropping rock base, and I think that may have been part of it that he looks he looks really good for a solo, and he uh, easy easy to tell him you know to make the mistake between the two, but. Uh, that was a that was a huge turn for this game because all of a sudden, if Anastasia either one doesn't fail both terror checks, well I guess the third terror check, or is back far enough she doesn't have to make the one that she fails. Either way, you would reactivate the dwarves, you'd reactivate the gun mages, and you'd reactivate the storm blades. Right. And so I, at this point, I feel like I just got incredibly lucky. And I, I think that I could have moved Anastasia to a location where she wouldn't have needed to do any, but uh, because of the uh, missing the model, uh, she moved into where she needed to make two and um, made the first one and, and failed the second. Yeah, there, I think with the positioning, there was probably a spot to uh, to have thags within five inches and not make either one. Would have been very precise because I don't. I think there was only maybe a like a half inch there to play with, mm-hmm. but definitely uh, when I was like, "Oh my god, she's in melee range of thags!" I get another terror check, another chance to not just auto lose. But uh, uh, so at this point, I'm just like, "Okay, now." There's a lot of models in a position where I don't think that they were where you wanted them to be because you thought they were all going to move around again. Right. And I was thinking one of the things that I wanted to do was to hit the gun mages with an obliteration because I could get the uh, I could get the officer as the primary target taking the POW 15 and kill three or four other gun mages, which would make it a lot more difficult for you to be pushing stuff out of the zone later on. Mm-hmm. And so that was this at this point it's now almost everything needs to go into the zones and I need to remove as many models as I could. So Shredder comes up there to work on Anastasia. Um, so he rabbits and he gets the kill. So he does a little nomming, which is um, something I tell to a lot of Legion players. You got to know the right point when your Shredder needs to start making attacks because it is too valuable of a two point model to always be considered support. Uh, there's definitely a point in the game where they need to start killing stuff or run up to control a zone or, you know, something. And I needed Anastasia out of the way, even though she was fleeing. And it's still, you know, with uh, with one, like one health left on that objective, um, I did want to try to uh, take that, that point and deny you the point for killing it. Yeah. So I figured I needed to get some sort of attack on it to finish it off. Um, just because if you're gonna if you're gonna soften it up and don't get all the way there, it seemed way too worthwhile for me to not get that one point. Sure. But I just try to get some since both of my guys could uh, could assault. Um, I wanted to hopefully kill you know two to four of the storm blades. Um, since I, I do still have, uh, I still have the, the UA granting prey, but I wouldn't be able to switch it around until that objective dies. And I didn't see a way to, uh, kill the objective first. And so we get a couple of storm blades off the table. Um, don't, I'm not in a position to get a, as Two of those guys still don't end up in the zone, but I didn't think there was really a good way for me to avoid that. And killing a couple of war spears is not hard for your list. Yeah. So, this is where I go in, and I'm just I'm just figuring uh, if I armor pierce, I'm gonna auto kill it, and so I just 
wanted it out of the way. And I was going to need angels in the zone anyway. And so I reassigned prey to the storm blades because they're pretty much all up in my grill. And he, he could run the, uh, the standard bearer away, but there's not a, that many left in that unit. So we're just checking to see if I can make another attack. And I get one more Stormblade. And I'll just do a little overtake movement. Because um, I couldn't overtake off of the objective because it was an armor pierce. Which is a very common mistake that people make with the Angelius. Is they'll overtake on an armor pierce kill. But it's only normal attacks. So he's pretty much loaded up. But I'm still at some point expecting to lose him. Man, it's funny looking at it. We've probably played 50 minutes of game so far, and it doesn't feel like it's been 50 minutes. <laughs> well, a lot of it hasn't been attack rolls. It's been, you know, moving around the table. Yeah, playing a little bit of the shadow boxing and trying to set everything up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so now I'm kind of back focused on the other side. I know I've got one angel still to move. Um, I do need to get... There's a Gorman over there that is also a huge concern to me um, because he, his ability to black oil is can be a problem. But I'm also very focused on Thorn since he's he's pretty far up there. Uh, anything that I can get on get on Thorn to potentially make it so Haley's not doing really awkward stuff with her spells. Um, there's just so many priority targets this particular turn and trying to maximize every single one of those attacks. Um, so, War Spears do a do an assault, but I think only a couple of them are actually going to get to make assault attacks because you don't get the assault if you're already engaged. Um, but if I recall right here, I rolled pretty well on Thorn. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I thought it was going to take a lot more, and um, I recall these two War Spears doing a lot of work. And my trusty Privateer Press dice, which not everybody loves. They sometimes fail me, sometimes don't. Uh, there, I got, a, I got a kill on Gorman. And so I was pretty happy about that. You had him off the table and didn't have to use a beast for it. Sometimes that 14 defense can be really annoying. And... I've got low rolls, but they're low rolls against um, defense 10, so that worked out okay. And then the important attacks on Thorn with the, the UA. It's going to end up hitting, and yeah, 12 on the dice was pretty good. So okay, he, I guess. <laughs> he he was softened up, so. And I'm I'm rolling the the column die was a die that uh, Dallas had just given me for how fucking close the game was with Scott, and I was like, Scott, you take one of these dice. This game was crazy. So still got two angels left. Uh, Thorn has been softened up, and I still want to go for that obliterate. Um, it's just having that opportunity to get on the gun mages is just too valuable. But the the exact positioning of thags is also an issue. I'm I, my big concern here is now that I have a chance to actually win this game, uh, I don't want to let you kill thags. Sure. And so that's that's my debating. But I was up I was up on some clock time, so I figured if I took a little bit to watch my to double check my decisions so I toss the obliterate I need a boosted eight and I roll a six and this is right where we uh, we check for deviation and it uh, it ends up deviating off of the gun mages and I think I catch one so I was I was a little sad 
because now pretty much all the gun mages are up, and Thags is not camping much. Oh, I don't remember what we were even talking about right there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very sad. Oh, one gun mage, and then Blast is going to do pretty much nothing to the objective and the forge guard. Not not as terrible as your one failed command check, but <laughs> but I'm sure that at least that small victory was uh, uh was appreciated. So I think I've just got the angels left, and I've got the solo who pretty much saved my life at this point. And Thags walks after the spell, gets himself in a little concealment. Um, I can't back him up because he's still pretty much right on the edge of the kill box. And I move uh, I move the angel over to finish off Thorn. Boost to hit. Uh, connect with the armor pierce. Boost damage on the armor pierce. We're calculating because you gotta have and then add the shield afterwards. And I think that was triple sixes. Or something very close to it. And Thorn dies. Well, uh, almost have us back on the same uh, same amount of time now. Uh, charge with the Forsaken. Just trying to get models off the table. And giving P. Alexia corpse tokens, because that's how you do it. Heck yeah. She's a boss. Uh... Sh she kind of is ridiculous for five points. Yep. Pretty good, especially since she collects off your own guys. Yeah. It's it's so weird keeping track of all the different models that only collect from one or the other. Huh. So I tow in the other angel into the zone, and I pass the clock over to you. So I'm so... not sure what you were thinking at the beginning of this turn. Oh, I was trying to think... Well, I was thinking, man, if I had killed the objective last turn, all I would have to do would be clear that zone, and I'd be at five points and I'd win the game, and that would be really easy. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> uh, I, I decide that I, if I kill the other objective and dominate this zone, that I'll be at three points, and then I'll just need to dominate again and can potentially win with that. And it seems like the best way to score the zone is going to be to have Alexia kill uh, one of the angels with Beast Lore. And, you know, that's, that's the, the rough shape of the plan. I was a little worried that you would just find a way to kill Thags, because I think I was camping maybe one. Mm. And uh, I don't know, was that a consideration at all? Um, it wasn't... I don't know, it seemed like it, it was going to be difficult for me to uh, get stuff over there. But it it's maybe what I sh should have been thinking about, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he had tenacity, he had one transfer, he's in concealment, but with he the is, tools that your list has. He's a pretty uh, pretty difficult to kill caster. Yeah. He does have the death shroud on the melee attacks, and he does have a fair amount of boxes, but right. I was still I was still worried. Um, 
you know, you, you do have a, a reputation, at least back from 2012, where you were the assassination whisperer. Um, oh, that's, that's falling a bit by the wayside. Yeah. <laughs> I don't go for assassinations nearly as much as I used to. It's funny, in 2013, I think I go for more than I did in 2012. Mm. Just people playing a lot more risky, a lot more high-risk, high-reward plays. And so it's got me looking at reaching out and touching somebody when they overextend. Mm -hmm. Whereas 2012, it just seemed like it never happened. Like People were always so far back. But between domination mechanics and the kill box... Uh, it does seem like people put themselves at risk a little bit more often. Yeah. And, you know, Harbinger's definitely hopped up in popularity. So there's there's plenty of those. And Epic Kane's popped up too. There's casters that, if you can get to them, they're surprisingly fragile. Yeah. So you're placing some, uh, placing some undead. Because when you're not playing Cricks, you got to still play Cricks. <laughs> well, sure, why not? <laughs> so I think I spent most of that time trying to figure out what I was going to uh, do for the turn. Um, didn't necessarily like my situation, but um, had to try to uh, do what I could. Yeah, the whole time where you were thinking, I'm just sweating the assassination, to be honest with you. I was. I felt like with the way that your previous turn had gone, I felt like if this was going to go down to attrition or scenario, I'd be able to pull it out. But I was. I was worried that I had now taken my one chance to, to actually pull out a win, and given you an assassination run, and I was pretty worried. But I. I'm used to people just like killing stuff with gun mages for almost no reason, like. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like, oh, you've got four gun mages. They can get dead eye and just kill tags. Like that's fine. And uh, Haley's Haley's a scary caster. She can be, but she also uh, her her personal. I mean, she influences the game, but her personal output isn't uh, that high. So, because my caster was on the hill, uh, she was able to uh, see Anastasia over the other models and did a telekinesis on uh, Alexia. And now I'm moving up to turn around the... or move out the other angel that's contesting the zone. Yep, and with concealment, you got that, no problem. And at this point, I'm just saying, hey, where do you want me to put him? What direction do you want him facing? Let me know. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of silly how much work Alexia 1 can do for her points. Um, she... I mean, she'll kill a heavy, no problem. I've had her... You know, almost kill a colossal by herself multiple times. Um, she's for five points. She can definitely get a lot of work done. Well, and you you have uh, you have Pendrake on these guys, so they're all pretty accurate. So the Risen can yeah. possibly soften up the other angel while Alexia kills one. Right. Because you can roll all their charge attacks before doing hers, and she starts using them to uh, to fuel her, you know, additional attacks. So it's right. It's uh, it's some good synergy, as they say. But who knows? Maybe I'll be playing uh, playing the uh, the bog trog, the undead bog trog soon. They look pretty cool. Not quite Pialexia cool, but close. But really, what is? <laughs> yes, <laughs> not many things in the game that are that efficient. It's true. We had a, a local player that was playing with Alexia 2, and he thought that since Alexia 1 collected off of friendly dead models that Alexia 2 did as well, and he was kind of discouraged or saddened that uh, it was only off of enemy kills that she collects. 
Which just seems sort of sad that Alexia got worse as <laughs> time went on. Yeah. But there's still some shenanigans with Rupert. But she hasn't been one that's, uh, at least for me as a Legion player, it's her defensive stats are at least low enough that you can often put like one Ravagor shot into her and it, it can deal enough damage that it just goes through her troop. And I don't mind killing five points with a Ravagor shot. But sure. did never have the opportunity this game. Yeah. And so I, I knew I was going to have to take it on the chin from her, but I certainly wasn't going to complain after how lucky I've already been. I don't know how you get by with that little dinky tape measure, though. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard size. Well, it just seemed kind of kind of thin and wobbly and didn't didn't sustain itself very well. Mm. I don't know. I like the I like a little bit smaller, just because the really big tape measures I have a harder time getting more precise measurements with. And it's e I suppose it's easier when you have a really thin tape measure because it's going to easy more easily fit between models right yeah so here we got p alexia starting to eat her guys to uh to tear apart my angel yep and i believe that i was just buying an attack and having it be boosted with uh beast lore from pendrake yep and then boosting and then damage. boosting damage which finally kills the angelius yeah because i was dark shroud too because of Ragman, so I was, you know, I'm not even sure you were boosting damage. I think you might have just been buying attacks because you were only dice minus three. Hmm. I don't remember now. It's been yeah, a little while. God, it's been. It's. Oh, well, I guess it's only been a couple months. <coughs> it feels like it's been <laughs> way it's, longer than that. Yeah, we're already, you know, already talking about the next Intermountain Cup. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, we hope to to bring a f full two cars and have at least eight people down. We, the, the community is pretty psyched and more people are itching for that competition. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing it again and maybe bring the Oregon guys too. So nice. That'd be sweet. Well, truly like all of the Northwest. We'll, we'll cover that whole area. And, uh, man, I got to give some props. I've been to two IMCs and gamers asylum is just like such a great place to hold these events and they've yeah, done they've a really, done a really good, job. good job so just props to those guys uh store owner was really sweet and he he was nice both times that i've talked to him that guy was super cool and we were trying to support that store for for having us and they even like ordered pizza for everybody and handled like managing getting money from everybody and getting everybody fed for such a you know 12 to 14 hour event so Man, huge props to the Gamers Asylum guys. Absolutely. So, what, they only had like 20 people in this event. We, uh, I, I managed to clear out the right zone, and now the uh, Forge Guard are charging the objective, and so I'm under the hopes that with killing this, I'll be up to three points, and then hopefully uh, next turn... Uh, if I dominate again, I'd be able to get the win. Um, but my damage dice are not too spectacular, and so the uh, charging forge guard were unable to uh, kill the objective. Weren't they not charging because of how you had to move them around? Um, they got it. I believe they did get a charger. I could be wrong, but okay. So I see you only rolling three damage dice, so I think. Or Maybe. one just off the table. I know some of them got caught up in Dark Shroud, and or the Death right. Shroud, and that, that actually ended up mattering in a couple cases. Right. At least I think it may have kept my War Spears alive. Yeah, that guy definitely charged. But... If I recall here, I don't think you broke the objective. I think you got it pretty low and weren't able to finish it. Yeah, off. it was that. That's correct. I on both objectives, I softened them up for you to be able to actually kill them. And I want you to know, I appreciate that, Jay. <laughs> well, I'm a giver. Yeah. Let's, let's say. And you know, for all of the listeners out there right now, Jay does smile. 
<laughs> it's just generally not when he's just sitting waiting for something. And we'll zoom in on the clock there. Uh, so here I, I had the uh, gun mages run away so that hopefully I would be able to use them next turn to push stuff out of zones so that I would be able to hopefully have an easier time dominating, etc. Uh, it came as a huge surprise to me. I was really surprised he ran those out because all of a sudden now I'm going, I could actually clear that zone. Sure. Um, so I I have to admit, I was very happy that you ran the gun mages away. I was that I was not expecting that maneuver and I was like, man, I'm definitely killing that objective and starting to score some points because that will put me um, that would put me up to four because I got right. one for killing the other objective and if I walk forward and dominate um, that puts me in a good scenario spot so that's definitely the moment you move those gun mages away I was like I'm gonna kill this objective kill five dwarves and um, get me some points and then the other plan would be to, that Thags is gonna feet and get the other um, get another angel back on the table just mm -hmm. to make things more difficult and I'm back to being 17 minutes up on you it's true <laughs> it uh I don't think that there was a chance that either that it was going to go to time for either of us no, one way or the other it was going to be decided there was just too much stuff leaving the table. Like, if when you have one of those bad rolling games where neither opponent seems to be removing stuff from the table, yeah, sure. But this one, we were just we were just dropping models all over the place. Yeah. So my goals were to kill P. Alexia because I didn't want you to let her do that stuff again. And um, this is where I wanted to use the the wonderful war spear charges. To kill the kill the objective while it was preyed, and then switch prey to the uh, the dwarves mm -hmm. to help clear them out, and um, it worked pretty well. So uh, at first, I did have to roll all of the assault shots first, because uh, but I didn't think I was going to be able to kill it with the assault shot. So I knew I'd have to resolve the first charge on the objective. And there was the first charge, switch prey to the other guys, and now I'm going to resolve their other attacks. And POW 13s are pretty, POW 15s are pretty good at killing dwarves. Bags walks up. I'm going to need him in the zone anyway. He might as well take some attacks. Get some eruption of Ash. Yes. Get me, give me some concealment. That's an ability people often forget about on Thags. Yeah. And then everyone's always disappointed when it doesn't actually damage my own models. <laughs> And then the eruption, the POW-12 eruption kills the other dwarf, too. And I figure... I figure any kills I can get is good at this point, but... Three dwarves left, and I definitely feel like I've got, a, I've got enough attacks. And... I think I was, I was getting almost a little close to forgetting to pop my other angel back onto the table. But I was also camping a lot, so I knew I could at least do a couple of things. So this was really put the angel in a position where hopefully I can get him into the other zone. So it was get him as far away from Thags as possible. And so I'm just using precision tool to get him right at the three inches.
you know, from this angle, that other zone looks like it's been lopsided for most of the game. Yeah, I think it was. A lot harder to see when you're just sitting across from it. Yeah. It's funny, I've had lots of people ask me questions about this list afterwards, and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure it's very good. <laughs> I was almost a little happy they didn't show up on Endgame right away. What do you guys think of the time clock and the angle of the camera throughout? Um, it's good. Like, I think yeah. this was a good angle to be looking at the table. Maybe a little closer. Um, just because... For example, you're looking at all my war spears and stuff. It's they, they kind of blend in together. It's almost even if you didn't, if you weren't really familiar with Legion. I mean, it might not even, it'd be pretty difficult to tell which who's the caster. Yeah, it was something we battled with. Um, if, if I when I was closer and I tried to like kind of get the up to the cards, it, like it cut out like ten inches on each side of the board edge, and so that was like. That only cut off like a half inch on the on your re right and left. And I'm wondering about you know getting a camera that can get closer and still you know give a little more definition in the models. But, yeah. but hey, on the plus side, you get uh, you get to see both uh, the baldness of Jay and I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Angel finishes off the uh, finishes off the Forge Guard in that zone. So I know I'm going to be dominating up to four points. And now I get to reassign Prey again. So I figure the Gun Majors are the most likely thing to enter in and contest that zone. And Thags is on three in concealment. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe. Yeah, I did not realize that this game went on this long. It seemed much quicker in my memory. <laughs> That's fair. I thought, well, maybe it was just because so many of the other games this round went long. Because there was yeah, still a lot of games left when we got done. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about potentially suggesting to the uh, uh, IMC committee, thinking possibly about the idea of doing the final tables variant for the next IMC. So nobody else plays the last round? Yeah. I can see that. I'd... That Fine. would be something I would, and a lot of people would prefer, I think, just be able to watch the final. I mean, Watch the finals game, and it doesn't go as long with other people who are playing. And most people after five rounds, I mean, they're, they're ready to be done. And yeah, they if you're not that... winning the whole thing, then. Yeah, you know you're not winning... And it's it's I obviously for this particular event you the other rounds uh, you're placing with it you want to do well to score for your score but I think five rounds is uh, probably enough to do a, a, a placing order. Well, one interesting thing is um, Team Card Kingdom won pretty much every game in this last round, mm -hmm. and that would have changed the scoring. Mm -hmm not having that final round can potentially shift who's yeah, going to walk away with the cup for sure. sure. So that's uh that would be an interesting trade off. I don't know. And there I was, did, I, guess ahead, I, assumed, I thought the, I thought the, the winner of the, the event got the cup, but it's the store that earns the cup, not the correct. The winner of the event gets his name on the cup, but it's uh, the store that earns the most points that gets oh. the cup. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, in IMC3, Scott wins the cup, but Card Kingdom was like two points behind for actually, or he wins the final game, but it was very close for the uh, for which store ends up winning, and it was pretty close this time around too, so. Yeah, it was. Um, um, War Spear backs off. Um, here, because we didn't know exactly where my angel was going to be able to get to, um, we were putting down a proxy base just to make sure that the angel could, in fact, get into the zone because there was, there was only a little bit of give, and that's lesson for everybody. Uh, precision tools, proxy bases, um, you don't want to be doing a move like that and just move the model 
and potentially make your opponent very frustrated. And because of the feat, you were unable to uh, I couldn't run. Run, run the beast, but he so could have counts. It was only walking seven, so I, I needed to make sure that one, the base could fit into the zone, and two, that the model could actually get there. Um, and now we're back on Jay's time, and I'm at four control points, Jay is at two. So your caster's protected well enough that I don't really feel like caster kill is an option, and so I'm hoping that I can telekinesis out your two angels, um, camp on some, have you miss some attack rolls on my caster, and hopefully not kill her, and run my other models into the zone, and, and see if I'm able to survive to control the zone next turn. It's not a great plan, but it's pretty much all I have at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, um, I didn't think there'd be a chance in hell that I'd be going for an assassination. I figured you're going to get models out of that zone, you're going to score two more points and be at four, and I'm going to be going, how do I clear out the zone that I'm in? Yeah, so this is definitely where it comes back to bite me on if I had succeeded in... Uh, killing either of the objectives that uh, if I succeed in clearing the zone, it would get me up to five, but instead the best I can do is uh, get up to four. And then storm blades aren't whirling particularly well either to help you out. It's true. Is your cat trying to become as famous as Chili's cat? No, she's a little sweetheart, unlike Chili's. <laughs> she's also Chili's is a kitten, and so uh, it's full of uh, vim and vigor, and mine's an old thing that just wants to lay around and be petted. Fair so. enough. Yeah, I think if you had been at three points, um, things may have been very different for how I played out my turn. Yeah, I would imagine so. Because cramming into that other zone, I might have had to put all three heavies in there. Yeah. Uh, so, what, But at the same time, could have meant that Thags ended up being more exposed, because I might have had to do something extreme to try to kill the Forge Guard. Mm -hmm. So, um, people asked why Haley moved up so close, and it was because of they were engaging other models, and she needed to engage them to not have the end melee penalty. Yeah. And I believe I forgot to run the squire forward, so I didn't get the reroll. Yeah. So you get that one out, no problem. And I think we're calculating, trying to double check, and I don't think you had gotten it on that one. Yeah. So another cast. I think I missed by one because of tenacity. Um, I think it was because he was still toe in the forest, so I think he still had concealment from your spell. Yeah, I think I, I which you were at 17 total. I think I rolled an 8, yeah. and I needed a, a 17. Yeah. So now there's, there's Rupert in the zone. The gun mages are all running back in. Um, and I've definitely had Rupert and tough gun mages cause me problems in the past. So, um, you book the squire over into the zone, too. Or, he doesn't quite get there. Yeah, he, he didn't have enough to make it. The funny thing is that you even if you didn't go for the caster kill, um, you I probably would have uh, had a pretty easy time controlling the the opposing zone easier than the one that was that Thagrosh was in. Yeah, I I kind of looked at that as well that um scoring on scoring in that zone would probably have ended up being easier, but with just accepting that I had two angels in walking distance of Haley, yeah. that it seemed like they should just turn around and try to kill her. Yeah, that's fair. And 
And I think my Shredder frenzied on one of my Angels. Just to make things interesting. But it was the Angel that was just brought back from the feet, so he was at full. So do a little armor pierce for plus two damage on an empty Haley. Hits, no problem. Dice plus two. Not a bad roll. So she didn't have very much left at that point. Yeah. Um, and I can't boost damage, but... I think you actually switched Arcane Shield to her, which is why she was still alive right now. Right, yeah. Uh, hit with Armor Pierce, or no, I think that might have missed. Yeah, I think it missed. I, think I needed a 10. So buy and boost to hit, connects, uh, dice minus 3. And that is the game. Yep. So yeah, that's the end of uh, at the end of IMC four, and um, at this point, I, I felt like I got so lucky pulling out this win against Jay that if it hadn't been for the long day, I mean, if this had been a first round game, I don't think there's any way that I win it. I think nine out of ten times I lose this match to Jay, and so I was just barely realized what had happened, and was uh, it was only a few minutes later is when I got really excited and realized that Card Kingdom brings home or wins the cup. And so I was super pumped for all my guys because they all won in the final round. And I was super excited for just having the whole team make the 13 and a half hour trek. And then um, being able to come away with a win felt really good. Good job by uh, your team and, and by you, Charles. Well played game. I, I look forward to us playing again because uh, I, I, I lucked out in a huge way. And um, man, six rounds, though, that's hard on anybody. It's true. Well, uh, Dan, thanks for recording it so that this all can be shared with the world. Yeah, I was really excited to do it. it I think it went well for one of my first shoots ever. Of course, there was no sound, so thank you guys for making this possible. Absolutely. Anything for you? Give back to the community. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it to spring uh, IMC. I deploy in January, but uh, I hope to come again in the fall and and uh, make this a regular thing. Good. Uh, thanks, Sounds guys. Good. Uh, good game. Congratulations, Omnis. And um, you guys have a happy holidays. You as well. Thank you. You too, Dan.